Hello and welcome to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. As up all the way it can be. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is off in parts unknown Florida doing stuff. I'm here to talk about the Super Showdown. Um, I didn't get a chance to watch it kind of when I was supposed to. I did watch for all four hours my Mountain Lightning to help prove that. This is my second glass. I really need it. Um, it was a it was a fun it was a fun show. It seemed like a really good live show. Not much overall happened. I gotta clean up. Just been watching wrestling kind of all day here on Sunday. Sunday is a wrestling day. Woohoo! Well, let's talk about some super showdown again. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And let's get into the show. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Oi, oi, oi. Ozzy, oi. Ozzy, oi. Ozzy, Ozzy. Oi, oi, oi. Australians are cool. I wish I could go to Australia one day. That'd be fun. I think they're at their cricket grounds. Amazing looking stadium. They set it up right. I had a WrestleMania feel to it. I think only the first, I think, 10 rows were kind of flat. After that, everything was on risers. So everyone got to see. I, I wish they did that at Orlando. Again, my seats were on the floor. Man, I was like this all day long. But they did that right. Um, a lot of promos for the Crown Jewel. And, and I'll get into that later. Um, so let's start off with the wrestling action. Again, the with the TV part, I think it was a little bit over four hours. Only because they had all the promos and, and stuff. Again, all, all the previews, all the backstory. And once we got to the wrestling, it was, it was about a good solid four hours almost. And I'll get to that because four hours, hey, the Aussies got their, their money's worth. I'll, I'll give them that. Okay. No. So let's talk some, about some WWE Super Showdown Wrestling. First thing, we have the New Day versus The Bar for the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. This was a really fun match. This was a great opening match. The card order surprised me just a little bit, but in watching the entire card, I understand why they did it. Uh, the, the timing again seemed a little wonky, but again, I'll get into that as I get to those matches. But with a New Day match, I mean, it was fun. There were a lot of high spots, a lot of action. The Bar, Cesaro, and Sheamus, they're such a good tag team. They work so well together. They seem to have that natural tag team chemistry. I mean, there was a one time it was a, they, they caught the New Day. Cause they were outside the ring. They caught the New Day. Sheamus ran, I forget who, into Kofi Kingston to the ring post first, and then Cesaro had Xavier Woods running him into the win, ring, ring post. And watching four hours of wrestling with Mountain Dew will, will tie your tongue a little bit. Again, so much classic tag team wrestling, so much classic double team. This this is this was a really fun match to watch. A very smart tag team wrestling, especially by the bar. Um. We saw the Cesaro swing. We haven't seen that in a while. I always like that when a wrestler doesn't do something for a while and all of a sudden brings it back. It makes it feel fresh. Because I know for a while Cesaro was doing that every match. He was probably told to do that every match. But now he saved it really for those special moments. It's good. Um, it was a great finish. He had like a semi-Mexican surfboard by Xavier Woods. Like a kind of backbreaker thing. And then a double stomp by Kofi Kingston. The New Day win. And again, this was a fun surf and turf quality match. Yeah, it was just fun. It was a great opening match. Then I think... It was a very WrestleMania setup. 
again, they did do a lot better job with the seating for the cricket ground. You know, cricket stadiums tend to be really big in India, England, Australia. I think South Africa has a couple cricket, has one or two cricket grounds. I know in New York and Queens they have the they have the cricket grounds, which is which is a really big thing. Huge stadium though. And they said it was seventy thousand plus. It actually looked and I know there's you need space for the ramp, the ring, so you do lose lose seating there. You lose seating in like the, the curtain area in the Titan Tron. So I mean seventy thousand people it looked really good. Um Again, a really long entrance ramp. It's very tip, very similar to a WrestleMania entrance ramp. So our next match was Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. Woo! Evil Becky is hot. Oh, ho, ho. evil Becky is cool, Becky. Oh shit, I did. Just realized that. Do that tomorrow for work. They come up too. Nah, I'll just shave. But it was fun. There was good action in and outside the, the ramp. Both worked their, their known body parts. Becky, Fl Becky Lynch was working Charlotte Flair's arms. And then conversely, Charlotte Flair was working Becky Lynch's legs. So, so it made sense. <sighs> and Becky's such a good heel. She understands what a heel does. Charlotte still teeters on being that tweener. And I just need a little bit of that energy. I'll be give me one second, folks. She's Charlotte Blair is still that tweener. Um, does some heel things, does a lot of face stuff, plays to the crowd a lot the, the way a face should. Um Becky Lynch fully understands heel. She's like, oh, okay, I'm done with this. I'm gonna take my belt and go home. Charlotte Ferris says, and that happening. And they go back to the ring. Becky gets stuck in the figure four. Never fully got to a figure eight. But she grabbed her belt, started to whip Charlotte in section with her belt. There were some pretty stiff shots. That's good. And I think it's because both Charlotte and Becky are such professionals. And they understand the uh, gravity of the situation, the gravitas, what, what they need to do in front of the crowd. And the Australians, they, they can be a no-nonsense sponge. There's my cat. Coming in. She wants to know what all the hubbub is about. Oh, almost. Almost got her. Just wants to pace around a little bit. <laughs> but, again, if you've ever seen an Australian rules football match, are vicious. One of the two things I would like to do if I ever did go out of Australia to see well, definitely a rugby match and definitely an Australian news football match. And then there's a whole bunch of other kind of more touristy things that I'd really really like to do. What, you just want a pet? This one's a tail pull. Tail, old tail rub. But again, this was a death day finish, baby. Together with a death day finish, even though it was a good match. It's a dusty old cheese bugger. Yeah. You don't want to be on YouTube for a change? So, again, this was a cheeseburger match. And this. Went into the our next segment, a live segment, there's normal stuff. Started to play some ACDC and the crowd was rocking out to that. I think it was playing Thunderstruck acoustically. Good stuff. Um, but again, he does his, his normal shtick running down the Australians. It was good. Chris K was by his side. Oh, last of this. Last of the jump. I'd start getting, start thinking about heading over the gym soon, too. So again, Elias and so this led to the next match: Elias and Kevin Owens versus Bobby Lashley and John Cena. Lashley really, it was just fun because Lashley understood the situation. He kind of mimicked John Cena's movements in the entrance when they run in. He does the slide, 
Um, Lashley really takes a lot of the bumps. Cena seeds. It's like, no, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna let you start. It's like, Lashley's like, oh, I'll start. He's like, okay, yeah, that's that's cool with me. Uh, I'll I'll talk about it, especially at the end. Um, Lashley really takes most of the bumps during most of the match. Elias and Kevin Owens really just double team them a lot, and it's really good. The only problem I had with this match, and I probably gave it, I mean, probably gave it a little bit lower ranking than I should have. Again, it was a good match, but it just seemed like an, av an average Raw match. I mean, this this could, this could have been the main event on Raw, and it, maybe I would have thought of it a little bit better. But again, with the six moves of Doom, let's see here, the five moves of Doom. It goes shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle, backdrop. Five knuckle shuffle AA, and then just like a spinning tornado punch. Now for the sixth move of Doom, Wall John Cena wins. Um, for that, this was a ham sandwich match. I mean, at, at the end, Cena's like using retirement almost. He talks very heartfelt to the crowd. It's like Ben said, okay, John, thank you very much. John, thank you very much. You get an extra three minutes. Just don't curse. My probably worst ever Vince McMahon impression. impression. <laughs> More like my Paul Ellering impression. Ooh, yeah! Macho Man is still the best. Again, it, it, was, it was okay. I mean, the fact that he has a six move of Doom. Uh. From there, again, it's nice because it's a, it's a big high, a little low. Oh, the Iconics come out. The hometown ladies come out. And they're very... <laughs> They, they did a switch because they went from being normally heels. Now that their faces are so appreciative about being back in, I guess, their home country of Australia. And again, the crowd realizes, yeah, they're. I think they're originally built from Sydney. This took place in Melbourne. But they're still Australians. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Aussie, oi, Aussie, oi. Aussie, Aussie, oi, oi, oi. So, yeah, it was just really good. Um, Corey Graves was great. <laughs> he said that the Hoska Naomi entrance looked like an episode of Sesame Street. Wow. Again, this was the Iconics versus Asuka and Naomi. Um, Billy Kay, I mean, she's really good in the ring. Peyton Royce, all, I mean, all four of these women are really good in the ring. Billy Kay and Peyton Royce probably have the most improvement. Billy Kay got hit with a groin pull. But no, there's the one part where Naomi goes to kick someone, the opponent pulls her leg, and then she kind of does a split. Billy Kay tried to kick Naomi. Billy Kay needs to learn how to do a split because it looks like a groin pull. I've pulled my groin once. All the pain I ever needed to feel. One groin pull. Um, then, and then everyone starts flying. I mean, Naomi does do the... I think she does it from the second rope, but it's a split-legged moonsault. Asuka does a missile drop kick. And Billy Kane and, and Royce went over. I mean, Naomi ate the pin. And it was that uh, it was a combo double team move, like a reverse back pick, face buster kick. I don't know. I can't describe this stuff that well, but well, I can to some degree. I think because again, it just kind of wears on you. These matches, these first couple of matches were not bad. I think they were about twenty minutes, maybe getting the 
25, 27 minute range with all the entrances and then the whole walk down the ramp all the way. But I mean, this was really a, again, it was a, it was a fun match. It was a cheeseburger match. And this led to what I thought, it's like, wow, this might be the match of the night. We have AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe makes his way to the ring first, kind of saunters in the heel. AJ has none of that, takes off his ring gear, rushes Joe. Good stuff. These two are amazing strikers. And the thing I like about AJ and Samoa Joe is that they can both tell a story in the ring, and they know how to pace themselves. Kind of slow start. Then as the match goes on, it picks up. I mean, just amazing striking by both. That's Samoa headbutt. Wow, best headbutt ever. If you're Samoan, the one move you need to learn as a Samoan is the headbutt. And then, the, again, after the initial brawl, wrestling's great. AJ and Ben Samoa Joe hitting both kind of, really, their, their signature or kind of classic moves. But they did so in such a way where it felt new. I know that's very hard to explain. Uh, again, apron spots on the floor. AJ Styles jumping over tables. I mean, there's a classic AJ flurry. A semi-muscle buster. I mean, there were chair shots. There were tables involved. Eventually, Joe kind of lands wonky on the table. Gets put through the table by AJ. Falls, falls funny on his knee. Sells the knee amazingly. AJ's like a shark. Once he smells blood, he goes after that. AJ continued to work over that whole knee. And to Samoa's Joe's, he continued to sell that knee injury throughout the entire match. I mean, I mean it was awesome. Um, a whole bunch of false finishes, especially from the Coquina Clutch. AJ was AJ fought like the man possessed. He fought like the man who was truly angry and just wanted to get at Samoa Joe whichever way he could. And, and that's why this, even with the end, when Samoa Joe tapped out, this was a filet mignon match. I mean, it was really that good. So again, you have that whole roller coaster going on through the whole match. Um, very, very hard to tell from the crowd. Open air stadiums are kind of funny. The crowd shots showed that the crowd was really involved. They were really interested in. It. It's not going to get the reverberation like like uh, American hockey stadiums will or minor league hockey stadiums will, only because the the noise can, can disappear and dissipate. Cricket stadiums are freaking huge too. So there's a lot of open space, so, so they, they, they could have been going absolutely bonkers. And the only way you could tell was, was to look at their facial expressions in the very few crowd shots that they did show. But they really seemed to enjoy it. Next we have the Riot Squad versus the Bell Twins and Ronda Rousey. A little, little tension in the beginning with Nikki and Rousey. Who's, off, who's the better? I don't want to see the Bellas wrestle. Um, Again, some classic wrestling. Liv Morgan p delivered a running knee or, or shiny wizard. She put a little extra mustard, especially when it came to Brie Bella. A little bit extra special sauce on that knee. Um, Bella, again, she had to give the, the softest, pillowiest knee strike ever to Liv. And she knew. So. Again, Bree Bree's wrestling's good. It's getting better. She's getting so, she's getting some of the ring rust off, but still, eh. I just was never a fan of the Bellas, though. So again, that's probably my own bias. Ruby didn't seem to get in to get in a lot. It was more Liv and Sarah Logan, and this they just wanted to highlight the Bellas and Ronda Rousey. And and with the finish, it was a double bicep cutter. It looks great, but 
No. 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 So, I mean, it was a good match. I mean, it definitely was. It, de it definitely wasn't bad. It was a ham sandwich. Oh, that was a much needed break. So much wrestling. Four hours was a long show. <laughs> a long show. And that's and again the timing. I'm gonna start to rant and rave about that next. But our next match, we have Cedric Alexander versus Buddy Murphy. This was the match of the night. If you've ever seen cruiserweights or or their two hundred five division, or Will Osprey or or any in, or any smaller indie guys, oh, this is good stuff. You need to watch that stuff. One that was crazy flippy stuff, like throughout the entire match. There was hard striking, kicks. I mean, false finishes. Again, just. Some truly amazing stuff. I mean, there was a top rope Michi Noka driver, Buddy Murphy, tell anything. Buddy Murphy went flying. I never realized Buddy Murphy could fly like that. Um, it's really... Oh, that's my girlfriend text. Let's see here. Let's see what she says. Take a quick break. Oh, cool. I'm glad. Uh, again, just amazing stuff. Dives left and right. There was a kick out of a lumbar check. The most protective finisher since the five moves of Doom. I mean, there was so much stuff I can't even list at all. Then, then there was the Murphy's Law. So many false finishes, roll-up attempts. They're trying to finish each other off. It was a filet mignon match. And we have a special guest visitor now. Even she said, that was the match of the night. There we go. She got in camera. I shall even text my girlfriend that. See her. Sweetie. Let's see her. Do this. Sweetie. Even. She's pa. Wanted. To be on YouTube today. Seer needs some emojis. You need more cat. It's the closest. One. There we go. Let's get back to wrestling. Then we have the Dogs of War, which includes Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler. And Drew McIntyre. You always have to say Drew with a little Scottish twang to it. Because it's not, it just sounds weird. Call him Andrew. When it's Drew McIntyre. Versus the Shield who came out in full right gear, gear face shields, everything. Um, um, what's the term for those? Baklavas? I call them Ninja Mask. Oh, what did she say? Oh, lol. It's a lol cheese for wins. Yeah. <laughs> cheese for wins. So, again, they came out, and they came out from the crowd, which is good. Um, match starts off, it's a big brawl, all six men in the ring. Then eventually there's there order gets involved and then there's some wrestling. This seemed like a long match. I want to say it was at least half an hour long. It might even have been longer. 
Again, on Raw, they would have had this match. It would have lasted 20 minutes. It actually might have been better. Um, again, there were a couple miscues by the Shield. Bra Braun Strowman went to the top rope. That doesn't seem good. Um, eventually, Roman went for a Superman punch, hit Dean instead. Are we going to see something on that on Raw on Monday? We'll see. Um, again, Braun just then starts to run around the ring, just bulldoze people. He's so good at that. They tried to do a three-man powerbomb. Braun broke that up, thankfully. They tried to do it on Drew. Drew's a big guy. Or was it Drew that broke it up? Did they try and do it on Braun? I don't know. Whichever way, the breakup was a smarter way. But then, it just seemed to be long. Roman did make up. He did eat a Claymore, I think. He pushed Dean out of the way, ate the Claymore. Hey, buddies, do that for each other. Sorry, buddy, for punching in the face. I'll take one for the team, though. It was good. Um, Dolph eventually gets pinned by Dean Ambrose. So Dean got to pick up the win with the Dirty Deeds. Dolph eats the pin. And it was a fun match. It was it was a cheeseburger match. And that's probably the problem with it is that there was nothing special about it. It was good and entertaining. And it just seems so long. Which led to our next match. Daniel Bryan and The Miz for the number one contendership. And the, again, The Miz comes, comes in, starts a promo. His promo gets interrupted by Daniel Bryan. All of a sudden, I, I, I go to get my second soda, and then the match is over. I guess in kind of rewinding stuff, there was just a bunch of striking. Miz went for the skull crushing finale. And Daniel Bryan reversed it into a small package. Daniel Bryan is the master of the small package. I think with the entrances and everything, it might have lasted seven to ten minutes. The wrestling itself was like two to three minutes. It's like, again, I went to go get another soda. It was over. That means this is a... Uh-oh. I don't think I've ever done this to either the Daniel Bryan or the Miz. But this is a can of soup mat. And there's only one tier below the can of soup. You do not want to be that. It just seemed too quick. I mean, there was so much buildup for this match, so, so much hatred between both wrestlers. Two minutes? That's it? <laughs> Listen, they could have taken five minutes away from the previous match, freaking 15 minutes away from this next match, and they could have had a proper wrestling match. And that led us to the main event with The Undertaker and Triple H. Oh, my God. This was such a long match. First of all, that ramp is way too long for The Undertaker. Triple H, Kane, and Shawn Michaels walk down. It was a fun match overall. I mean, there was a lot of brawling involved. That was they had their classic boss. The Undertaker walked on the top rope. Everyone kind of gasped, and, and Triple H really kind of held him in place. Again, Triple H did his classic moves and knees and everything else. Oh, she doesn't want to be on, on YouTube anymore. She just wants, wants us to be in the background. No, that's her let me outside look. It is going to be that hour. Oh, it is. Gotta speed this up. Um, again, a table was set up. There was kind of a good comedy moment where HBK and Kane start running around the table. HBK get, gets involved first. Um, Undertaker 
some points really showing his age. And they're very basic wrestling moves besides their classic moves. You know, one time Triple H had him in the pedigree. Undertaker could, could barely lift. Then, of course, you had your chair shots because it was a no DQ match. Then uh, Kane goes through a table. There were rough bumps. Uh, Sledgehammers got involved. I mean, at the end, it was, it was good. It was a tease of sportsmanship. Then, of course, Kane and Undertaker started to smack around Triple H and HBK. I mean, HBK ate a choke slam. Triple H again ate another tombstone. To me, this match took an hour. This was way too long. Especially considering Daniel Bryan and The Miz only t only took like like two minutes. I'll give him that. I'll give him this much. Though. The Aussies got their money is worth because this was a cheeseburger match. And to top it all off, fireworks! Everyone likes fireworks. I mean, overall, it was, it was a it was a good show. It just seemed like a really long house show. I mean, most house shows I know for NXT are about two and a half hours. This was only an hour and a half show. Again, I wanted to watch it on Sunday. I didn't feel like waking up Saturday morning for this. I'm glad I didn't because. I would have been asleep. <laughs> I would have been back asleep at this point. And I think I would have seen it starting about 4 or 5 a.m. Yeah. Again, I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Seriously, you can even be like my girlfriend. Leave a little smiley face. There we go. Smiley face. Blackout. Oh, that's not good. Well, that happens all the time. I would thank everyone for watching. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Next week, again, have kind of the normal thing. I'll probably, I don't know if I'm going to do a reaction. Can't do live streaming anymore. Maybe I'll do a quick reaction. I'll, again, with a um, SmackDown on the Mixed Match Challenge, because that is fun. Again, probably get to Lucha Underground probably on Friday, maybe Saturday. Again, actually, all this did was set up for Crown Jewel. Another way too early or way too late pay-per-view. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Oh, I caught you.